Having been defeated, Napoleon realized he had lost the same backing and resigned a second time. Napoleon visited Empress Josephine, who had become ill soon before his arrival and died while he was abroad, before he was banished once again. Napoleon had been hoping to visit her, and though Josephine was ill, she indicated a wish to meet Napoleon in spite of their tense relationship. Napoleon was displeased to learn that Josephine's daughter had sold the letters after Josephine's servant had taken them. Napoleon was sent to St. Helena to live out the remainder of his days, never to see France again and Louis XVIII was restored to his throne. Napoleon's objectives as French emperor and military domination described. At different points in his life, Napoleon Bonaparte had a variety of objectives, but his main objective as the military ruler and emperor of France was to subjugate the strong nations that resisted him, specifically, Russia, although Napoleon also aimed to subjugate other European nations, such as Britain, and impose French power over them. This objective also encompassed parts of the Ottoman Empire, yet Napoleon never quite made it there despite losing tens of thousands of soldiers in his several military operations. Napoleon attempted to establish his own royal lineage to rule over France after his death by declaring himself emperor, and later marrying Mary Louise, an Austrian archduchess, despite his early support for the French Revolution and the overthrow of the monarchy. This explains his intense attempts to have an heir with Empress Josephine and his eventual divorce from her after she failed to conceive a son. Napoleon was motivated by his ego and passion for power, particularly in his final years. Napoleon's reactions to his second exile. Napoleon was banished again, this time to the Atlantic island of St. Helena. For the whole of his stay, he was under British protection and separated from his wife and children. Napoleon authored a book on Julius Caesar when he was residing in St. Helena, despite not being very happy with his surroundings or lodging. On the island, he was still accompanied by a small group of fans, nevertheless. Napoleon's first exile, which lasted barely 300 days, was followed by a second exile that lasted six years. At the age of 51, Napoleon passed away from stomach cancer in May 1821. Other research revealed that the former French emperor was most likely inadvertently exposed to arsenic at the time from other sources, despite the subsequent theory that he was purposefully poisoned with the element, explaining why his body was so well preserved. Although Napoleon was buried in St. Helena, Louis Philippe was able to bring him back to France and give him a formal funeral. The true significance of Napoleon's final remarks. France, the army, head of the army, Josephine, were Napoleon Bonaparte's last words. Napoleon's life may be summed up in these few sentences. Napoleon had a turbulent and potentially destructive relationship with Empress Josephine. Yet despite this, they were deeply committed to France and his men. It was thus not surprising that near the end of his life, he would think of her in France. The very phrases allude to Napoleon's greatest values and, in a sense, his life's commitment. Napoleon also claimed to have seen Josephine when in a delirious state prior to his death. Napoleon confessed and was absolved by papal delegate Abvignali a few days before he passed away. Therefore, it's probable that Napoleon hinted at a tremendous remorse in his final comments, which he was only able to accept shortly before his death. Maybe it was sorrow for how he managed the wars and his authority over France, or how he treated Josephine. In any case, the last words Napoleon uttered were about the very things that he had committed his life to and were most important to him. How Napoleon rises to power following his first banishment. Napoleon was banished to the island of Elba in 1814 after being forced to resign as French emperor, but he was able to escape with 700 troops in tow in 1815. Napoleon's popularity was portrayed in Ridley Scott's film with the 5th Regiment, who had pledged loyalty to Napoleon's successor, Louis XVIII. Not only did the 5th Regiment decide to back Napoleon in his re-establishment as emperor, but its strength increased to 200,000 troops. Napoleon found it relatively simple to regain his position in France since Louis XVIII wasn't a popular leader, and Napoleon still had a large following and network of people who remained fiercely devoted to him. What remains after Napoleon's death for his son? Napoleon discloses that after divorcing Empress Josephine, the emperor had a son, Napoleon Francis Joseph Charles, with Marie-Louise, the Archduchess of Austria. However, Napoleon's son vanishes from view after taking the infant to visit Josephine. After Napoleon's second removal in 1815, Napoleon too governed for just two weeks, although neither he nor Marie-Louise accompanied Napoleon in his exiles. Napoleon too was made Duke of Reichstadt in 1818 and spent much of his time in Vienna, Austria. His tuberculosis death at the early age of 21 prevented him from ever being recognized as Napoleon's legitimate heir. What is omitted from Napoleon's true story by Ridley Scott? Historical fiction films often err on the side of creativity, adding or deleting details. Even Napoleon's genuine narrative isn't totally true. Though they did engage in combat at Waterloo, the movie omits the fact that Napoleon, the Duke of Wellington, and Arthur Wellesley never truly met. During his marriage to Empress Josephine, Napoleon also had several extramarital relationships and multiple illegitimate children, 
Just one of his mistresses and his second marriage are included in the movie. Napoleon did not see Marie Antoinette's decapitation either. Importantly, several attempts on Napoleon's life were completely omitted from the movie. In 1805, Napoleon was crowned not only as emperor but also as king of Italy. Why Napoleon, a Corsican, fights for the French. Despite being born on the Mediterranean island of Corsica, Napoleon has always been associated with France. Throughout its lengthy history, Corsica was ruled by the Republic of Genoa, but it did temporarily enjoy independence. Napoleon was born just one year after Corsica was given to France by Genoa in 1768, which made him a naturalized French citizen. Even though his family was descended from Italian nobles and his parents had battled France to keep Corsica independent, Napoleon subsequently identified as French and backed the French Revolution against the king. Napoleon, however, identified as Corsican in his early years and even desired to fight against the French occupation. Thanks for watching, and if you're new to channel subscribe and click the bell, so you don't miss out latest videos of media breakdown.